Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett, and welcome to the first of many videos covering the various changes coming to EU4 with the 1.30 patch and accompanying Emperor expansion. These videos are intended for people who are interested only in certain aspects of the new update, missed a few dev diaries, or prefer to learn using a video format. Today, we'll be talking about the changes coming to the German parts of the HRE and Bohemia. This is, however, not a video about the changes coming to the Holy Roman Empire mechanics, as those aren't entirely revealed yet. What we know so far has a few gaps in the important details compared to what we see in the dev clashes, so we'll have to wait a little while to be entirely informed. Without further ado, let's begin in southern Germany with a fractured Bavaria. The Wittelsbach Duchy of Bavaria starts off split between the family branches of Munich, Landschut, and Ingolstadt. The player can receive a Restoration CB against the other branches, possibly as any of the three tags, but definitely as Munich. Also new to the Bavarian region are Regensburg as a free city, and Passau as a bishopric under the vassalage of Munich. Once these territories are reunited, the Kingdom of Bavaria can be reformed and will have more development and provinces than before. There's also a new set of Bavarian missions available to the three branches, as well as Bavaria whole. Starting with reunification of the duchy and ending with claims over the Netherlands, Brandenburg, and a possible personal union CB over Austria itself, we can see Bavaria has ridiculous potential if put into the right hands. As for national ideas, I think we can assume all three duchies will start with the Bavarian idea set, which have not been changed from what we know so far. Still in southern Germany, we have the introduction of the county of Bregenz, now separate from Austria, as well as a makeover to Switzerland. Switzerland's largest independent power, known as the Three Leagues from what we know so far, has been split off, making Switzerland a little bit weaker. From what we know, there will sadly still be no Swiss mission tree. What we do have, though, is some changes to the Swabian region, which has seen the introduction of new provinces for Austria, Baden, and Württemberg. As I was recording the voice audio for the script, actually, I realized that there will be Swiss missions, but they weren't covered in a dev diary. They were actually revealed on stream with one of the dev clashes, and starts off by consolidating Switzerland, going through the Geneva Conventions in one of the trees, and perhaps even ending the Habsburgs. We're not entirely sure what the missions can do because we don't have a dev diary on them, but we can at least confirm that they will indeed exist. Ravensburg has now been replaced with the free city of Konstanz, and Alsace with the bishopric of Strasbourg. A new tag called Mulhauser has also been introduced, and the great power of Ulm has finally been put in its rightful starting position, with its own set of Ulmer ideas. In addition, any tag with a Swabian culture can now form Swabia, but we have no further details about ideas or missions for a united Swabian region. As a final note to southern Germany, we have the changes to the Palatinate. Other than getting a new province, the Palatinate has also received a few missions of their own. Surprisingly, these missions can give the Palatinate multiple restoration of Union CBs on Bohemia and the Bavarian tags, so they can actually become quite powerful. Now let's move up to central Germany and start with Saxony. Saxony's territory has been reshuffled and they now have a PU over Thuringia, a new tag in the region. Thuringia will be a rebellious subject, and the stability of the Union will be challenged in the following years through various events. Both Saxony and Thuringia will also have access to the Saxon mission tree. The main focus of the tree is to keep Saxony from fracturing further, and to integrate the other half of the Union, after which the tree expands into conquering the areas around you, and potentially even spreading your dynasty onto the Polish-Lithuanian throne. The region of Franconia has also seen some new tags and lands, as well as the new formable nation of Franconia itself. Würzburg now has Bamberg as a vassal, and Ansbach now has Bayreuth under a personal union. Finally, Rottenburg has been added to the west as a free city. As for the United Franconian State, we have no news on the missions or ideas it could have. In the Rhineland to the west, we have the new tag of Berg, 
who has a considerable amount of land at the beginning and makes your eyes want to bleed with a large amount of border gore. Bohemia, the juggernaut of the HRE, has also seen some changes for province distribution. The biggest change is obviously the splitting of Silesia into two tags, both of which can form Silesia once again if they find themselves free and in possession of the right lands. Although not explicitly confirmed by the devs, I think we can be sure that both of these tags will start as vassals of Bohemia, as that's what's historically accurate. Next, but not last, we can move to a very different looking northern Germany. Brandenburg has had a few more provinces added, and the province of Neumark has been split to add Dramberg. Dramberg has also been added into the sale of Neumark, so you can get more land for your ducats. Lots of the other North German princes have also received a few provinces of their own. Brandenburg's also received a massive mission tree expansion. From the beginning, Brandenburg has access to its original missions, with this added tree on the side, which encourages conquests of Northern Germany and uniting the North German Federation. After forming Prussia, they unlock this part of the tree, encouraging development and the creation of Prussia's army with a state. Pomerania has been split into two states, Vorgast and Stettin. Keeping with the fractured state's theme so far, Pomerania can be reformed when one of the princes has overtaken the other. That's not all for Pomerania, though. The island of Rügen can now also be released with the option to become its own pirate republic and raid the Baltic coasts. The final tags to be added to the North German collection are the free cities of Goslar and Dortmund. Surprisingly, there's a new mission tree being added for everyone's favorite peasant republic as well. We don't get the whole of the details, but it's described to be similar to Navarra's OPM expansion path. Difficult, but also very rewarding. It looks like they get missions to expand across Lübeck into the Baltic, and perhaps even into Russia. If there's ever a time to get the lessons of Hemingstedt's achievement, it's definitely when Emperor releases. Before we move on to cover all of the Austrian changes, there's a general change to theocracies in the HRE now as well. For one, Mainz, Cologne, and Trier now have their own idea sets, diverging from their default divine ideas. The theocracies now also have a few of their own missions as well. For one, the imperial ambition has been replaced with this tree on the right, encouraging the theocracies to build churches, amass an army, and have a religiously unified HRE. The left branches encourage relations with the emperor and other theocracies, and each theocracy will have a unique mission or two for themselves. Now that we're done with Germany, let's move back to the south and talk about the changes to Austria. Austria will have a plethora of changes which will take up the remainder of today's video. As you can see, Austria's provinces have been changed drastically. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the true historical Austria split into multiple pieces, but we instead see Austria proper gain four provinces, and have a few new tags pop up around them instead. Trent and Celia have also been released as independent tags, probably as some of the hardest starts in the game. Without getting into the changes to the HRE mechanics themselves, everything else to deal with Austria comes from its extensive and powerful mission tree. Austria has received the same treatment as Britain, Spain, and Portugal, getting a massive and expansive alt history tree to play around with. I'm sure we can see a glory to the Habsburgs achievement coming along soon for the completion of this massive tree. As we go through the tree, some of these things are rather self-explanatory just from a glance, but there are some hidden features in here as well. Upon completing the Multicultural Empire mission, Austria gets access to an incredible government form. The Austrian Imperial Monarchy gives some of the most powerful bonuses to any government type that we've ever seen, on a similar level to the Prussian Monarchy. Minus 2 National Unrest Decrease, 2 Extra Promoted Cultures, 33% Cheaper Promote Culture Cost, and most powerfully, plus 2 Diplomatic Skill to every Monarch. Going down the same branch on the tree, Austria gets claims going further down the Balkans and eventually to take down the mighty Ottoman Empire themselves. On a branching path, Austria also gets claims on around half of Italy, turning them into the masters of the Venetian trade node as well. Going down the secure electors path turns the Holy Roman Empire into something that is truly Holy, Roman, and 
arguably an empire, forcing religious cohesion, putting Roma into the empire, and passing multiple reforms will send you all the way down the tree. The other branch sends you into the north and the east to claim power over Bohemia and Poland. Deal with the bishops sends you down the path to the west to own the Netherlands and connect up the various exclaves of the Austrian lands. The balance of power has Austria dominate Europe entirely by eventually requiring Austria to have five-eighths of Europe in the Austrian sphere of influence, whether as a subject, in the empire, or directly under Austrian control. Then finally, Austria must defeat all the great powers in Europe or have them as allies. Oddly enough, the final path I haven't talked about, barring the regular state development one, is the Austrian colonization path. In our timeline, Austria never sought out colonial territory in a meaningful way, likely because Austria had enough problems to deal with back home. In EU4 though, the colonial branch has you start with the Netherlands and begin your colonial journey from there. Colonize parts of India, China, and Australia to finish off this tree. It's my mission in the next few weeks to try and cover as much of the new update as possible before it launches. Today I can gladly say that we can fill out Germany on the map. Which parts do you want me to cover next? Don't forget about mechanics like estates and the legendary Burgundian inheritance too. Each is well deserving of their own videos and I'd be more than glad to cover each of them. If you want to see more Emperor content covered on the channel, leaving a like would go a long way to making that happen. And if you don't want to miss the next one, subscribing and turning on notifications is your best bet to make sure you're caught up with every single upload. For now, this is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. I'd like to give a quick thank you to the following March patrons. In the $1 tier, we have Quiet Guy, Quigersol, Rising Runner, and DLNM. In the $5 tier, we have Odie. And in the $20 tier, we have Chewy Shoot. Thank you guys so much for helping out the channel. It means a lot to me, and as always, I can't possibly thank you enough.